Hello, I'm John Paul. I'm here at Rumor Brothers to fit a big brake conversion kit on the front of this 2003 MGTF. The original disc is a 240mm disc and these were going to be offered as, a, as an upgrade to, to 304mm with some twin pot calipers but unfortunately the car was discontinued before this actually happened. If you're going to fit the bigger discs and the bigger calipers and you've still got the stock 6x15 inch wheels on you will need to change these, they're not big enough for the calipers to fit inside the wheel so you will need to change them to some 7x16s which you can see on this car here. As you can see this style of the this, this 7x16 inch wheel that's been fitted to this particular car but here we're Rimmer Brothers, they do have five different styles of 16 inch rims that will fit with the big brake conversion kit. As always with this sort of job, get the vehicle raised in the air, lucky enough we've got a ramp, uh, but if you haven't just jack it safely and jock, chock it with a uh, axle stand and then it's time to get the wheel off. Now I've got the wheel off, you can see the discs are fairly small, they've got a single piston sliding caliper. Essentially this whole arrangement is of a, an MG Metro and really not up to a sports car. So that's why we need to upgrade it to a bigger disc and a bigger caliper. There's not too much to take off to do this job. You've got the two retaining screws that hold the disc onto the hub and obviously you've got the two bolts behind the caliper. So the 15mm nuts on the back of the caliper and you've got a flexible brake hose. So you'll need a, a flexible brake hose clamp to clamp it to stop the fluid coming out. 40mm spanner for the banjo bolt um, and then the Phillips screws that hold the disc onto the hub are generally fairly tight so you probably will need an impact screwdriver to get those off but I'll show you each process as we do it. The first one I'm going to do is to get these Phillips screws out so with an impact screwdriver just place it in and keep giving it a bit of a tap. You'll see the screw start to move and hopefully they'll come out without snapping. I've managed to slacken the two retainer bolts for the disc on but I've just left them in place while I get everything else sorted out. So I'm going to remove the banjo bolt for the flexible brake hose so just I've got this sort of a brake hose clamp so just clamp off the hose so you can just stop the fluid coming out and then 14mm socket onto the banjo bolt give it a tap undo that and just when you get to take the banjo bolt off just be sure not to drop the two copper washers although we will be replacing them with new ones and then once that's out of the way, we can just tuck it over the subframe so it's out of the way and then we can move on to the brake caliper. Next we're going to remove the caliper, so there's two 15 spanner sized bolts at the back. So if you just get a socket on, give it, a, it might be a bit tight to get started. And then once they're off, we can take the caliper off. That's the caliper unbolted. You can see the chamber where the piston sits in, so the brake fluid goes in there from your flexible brake hose, pushes on the back of the piston which clamps the pads around the disc, so that's your braking. And then you can see there are the two caliper sliders to let the carrier slide on the caliper as the pads wear. And you'll see when we get the new caliper, you'll see what the difference is. And now it's time to remove the disc. We've slackened off the two retainer bolts earlier. One I've already taken out and the other one once it's out, it's just a case just slide in the disc over the wheel nuts and there we are. Once the disc is off and you can see the, you see the hub there, you want to make sure that that surface there is as clean as possible and no rust whatsoever because if the disc goes on and it's slightly a bit of rust underneath, you, it will get a bit of warp in and you get a bit of brake judder. So just either clean it up with wire wheel, get some memory cloth in the bits you can't get in with a wire wheel, but just make sure it's all nice and clean and copper grease before you refit the disc. So I've cleaned all the hub up, put some copper grease on, got the new retaining bolts and um, we've got the new disc so refit it onto the wheel studs, obviously make sure that the screws line up properly, fit the new retaining screws, i put a bit of copper grease on the threads of the retaining screws as well just so in future if you need to take them off they hopefully won't be as tight and once they're in place and tight we can get the new caliper. This is a new brake caliper. Uh, as you can see, you've got your two chambers each side for your two pistons. 
Um, you've got your link pipe, so as your flexible pipe comes in, that side there pushes the fluid in. The link pipe, so you've got both pistons pushing, one on each pad, so you've got no sliding caliper arrangement, and they clamp your disc. So it's now just a case of sliding it into the... Oh, one more thing to mention, these calipers are handed. So you can see the arrow going down there on the, um, on the spring chamber there, and also there's an arrow on the caliper itself. So make sure you fit the right side so it's just a case of popping it in, replacing your bolts, top and bottom, and then once they're tight, we'll fit the flexible brake hose back. I've tightened the two caliper bolts up to 85 newton meters, so now it's a case of putting back the flexible brake hose, so new copper washer, a new banjo bolt through the banjo. As you can see, it only goes one way, the little pin goes there and there, and there's a little casting that holds it all in place. So once that's all done up, we can tighten that up to 35 newton meters, and then we can uh, remove the clamp from the flexible brake hose and bleed the brakes. That's the job all back together now. All we need to do is bleed the brakes. Two bleed nipples on this particular caliper because it's got two pistons with a link pipe. So I would always start with the furthest one away. So slacken it off, several ways of bleeding the brakes. If you've got a pressure bleeder that you can attach to the reservoir, all well and good. And then put a pipe on the bleed nipple, slacken it off to see the air come out so it's all finished and it's just fluid. Do the same to both bleed nipples. Alternatively, if you haven't got a pressure bleeder, get somebody in the car and as they if you ask them to keep pressing the foot on and off the brake pedal, so as they go down, the fluid will come out into your little tube and then just let them take, take the foot off and then you'll keep doing it until all the fluid is coming out and there's no air. Do that to both bleed nipples, lock them both off and then once the brake pedal feels nice and hard, then you know it's all okay. Just one last thing to check before we uh, put the wheel on, and that is to make sure the flexible brake hose in a full lock isn't stretched, and then move it to the other lock and make sure it's not catching on anything and chafing. So once that's all fine, and that's okay, and then we can then put the wheel back on. It's now time to refit the wheel, so just very carefully, try not to catch your new calipers, put the wheel back on, replace your wheel nuts, once it's on the floor, torque the wheel down to 70 newton meters, and then it's all done. You can see, if you can see, how great the calipers look through the wheels as well. So that's this side all done. You can see how great the caliper looks in that wheel there. The other side is exactly the same process. Obviously, it, the, the calipers are handed, but you've, now you've fitted this one, you've only got the other one to fit the other side, so, but just do just check you have got the right one that's going in the right rotation. And then, hopefully, when you get on the road, you'll notice a massive difference.